Hey, what's up fellow anglers? It's Aaron Lasseur here. And today I'm back out on the Delta. I'm back up here on the North. This is the last time I'm gonna be on the North for a while. I'm gonna start making my way back down towards the middle Delta and then eventually hit the South Delta. But today I'm gonna hit some areas on the McCullamy and then I'm gonna head over to Hog. And this is some crazy weather right now. It's, what time is it? 7.40 in the morning. And we've got all this overcast right now. It's, there's no wind out here, and this is some prime top water action. So of course, you know, I've got my whopper ploppers out. I got that new sprinkler frog I'm trying out today. I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hop around on the McCullamy until I get to hog, and then I'm gonna hop around in there, and then I'm gonna get back out on here later on today when the tide goes out, because right now we've got a falling tide. And let me show you all the particulars we got right here of what our conditions are today because they are not typical for summer right now. Like, like I said, we've got all this overcast action. So I'm gonna throw top water as long as I can until the top water bite goes away. I'm still gonna try to do some, gonna do some punching. I might flip a Senko. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna find in hog, but I'll show you guys some overhead shots. I got my drone back from the shop finally. There'll be some drone shots, some overhead stuff, some Google Earth like usual. I'll drop some waypoints when I catch some fish. So. And I'll also show you kind of why I'm hitting certain areas that I do throughout the day when we catch some fish. So I got the top water stuff ready to go. I'm ready to see if this is going to be some awesome epic action because it's actually pretty warm. I'm sweating right now and it's seven in the morning. So I'm thinking we might catch some big ones today. I hope so. All right, let's find out. Let's go fishing. Okay, so we, I made it over here to hog. I went through that entire stretch from I wanna say beaver-ish to here, looking for high percentage areas, just, just trying to throw top water because it's still pretty cloudy and overcast today. I had a few two pounders rolling on a frog, nothing on the whopper plopper. I was trying the outside of weed lines, the trough across the cheese. Nothing was really going on over there on the top except for like I said, just a few bites. I'm gonna run around here and hog. There's The tide's going out. We're gonna hit the points in the slough. We're gonna punch i'm going to throw some top water if there's any open areas where i think we can get bit and try to put something together in here got the punch and stick out so let's start punching around see if we can't get some of these bites if they're not coming to the top let's see if we can go down and get them Jeez. Oh, that was a good one. Oh man, he crushed it. There's a nice solid one. It took me a while to get a bite. I'm actually fishing these islands that are out in the middle of hog right now. You can see this. I can see there's a bunch of frog trails on this cheese mat over here. So I saw some blow up holes, so I figured there'd be some fish in here. So I've been punching the outside edge of it and then the wind started to pick up. And so it's blowing on this edge right here. So I thought I'd throw it on this side. It didn't take long for me to get this one to come up and eat it. I'm gonna keep going down this side right here. See if I can't get another bite on this little stretch right here, either punching or throwing this whopper plopper again. So I went around this entire little island right here one more time to see if I could get another bite. This spot sets up so good for these bass. Nice shallow island top with lots of cover and deep water access on both sides. You can flip, you can throw a frog, you can pitch Senkos to the outside. I tried to throw a, a chatter bait. There's some sparse hydrilla out here. I went all the way around, throwing the whopper plopper. I threw the sprinkler frog in the pockets. Couldn't get another bite. I'll throw a waypoint down for you guys though because this little island could hold some bass. It, it, there's lots of fish out here. I see some bait and striper are hitting out here towards the, the middle of the slough. So these bass are going to move up and down all day long. So you just never know when you're going to time it right and catch a couple here. So. There we go. All 
All right, not a big one, but it's another one off one of these islands out here, but on that, right on the weed edge, that's just a little one pounder. Again, seeing lots of activity out here, stripers busting on bait. I'm gonna keep running this uh, island pattern and see if I can't get some big ones to come out. I've tried a different island, got nothing on that one. I've been punching, I'm working the outside first. And then I'm gonna work the inside and I'm also punching to see if, to try to figure out where these fish are positioned. So far, the, both these bites have come on the outside weed edge of these little islands. Okay, I'm back out on the main river, the McCullamy. I went all the way back to the end of Hog. Man, it would look good back there. There's lots of clean water, like lots of hydrilla. There's some top water around because it was so clear and nada back there. So decided to come back out. I'm gonna hop around here on the McCullamy, hit some high percentage areas. I'm gonna do a lot of flipping. The tide is almost completely out. So this will show us a lot of the good weed line and edges. We'll hit points, we'll hit some pockets where I think where the, the current is rolling up right up against it. We'll hit some of those areas. Maybe throw a little top water as well. I got another bite. I actually was shooting some drone footage. Uh, first island that I just showed you guys earlier had another one come and try to eat my whopper plopper right at the boat. So that island definitely has some fish on it. Let's hop around, let's see if we can't get bit out here. And then we'll make our way back and we'll pick out some spots on the way back as well to hit and see if we can't put together three or four here on the river for you. There we go. I finally punched one. Oh. All right. I've been going a ways, trying to find some, oh, fish down. Trying to find some areas that they're gonna eat this thing that's either it's too shallow or it's a, a huge flat and I can't get the concentration of fish enough. I can't find them, but I just punched one right here. I'm gonna keep running this little section here and maybe they're gonna be in these little troughs where it's, uh, Got some deep water. This is 10 feet. This is some of the deepest part of, the, of this river stretch from Hog to where I'm at now. We'll see what we'll see what I can put together. I mean, that's not a big one, but at least I got bit right here. There we go. Oh. So I decided, oh, got a boat coming. So I got found a riprap wall, decided to bust out the crankbait, got a little one. Let's see if the stretch has got more on here. And if it does, I'll throw a waypoint down from one end to the other. It's not big, but it's a start. Let's see what's going on over here. guy. Whoa! Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Well, that's not a big one, but I'm out here day two because back at Hog Slough, I didn't get the, quite the footage I wanted or the fish catches I wanted. I 
was out here throwing a bunch of top water. I was punching and I got like, what, three bites. And you guys are gonna see all the stuff previously in this video. Conditions are a little bit different today. It's a little windier, it's a little colder. I decided, you know what, I'm gonna come out here again because I want to do some finesse fishing. I think, I know there's fish out here. I got some good bites and I've been seeing a bunch of fish on my graph out here. So I think they're out deeper on these points. So I brought a drop shot and I brought a little curl tail worm with a, a bullet weight on it. And I'll show you guys how I rig those up. See if I can't get a lot more bites doing this and maybe get some big quality bites as well. Sometimes you gotta come out here and you have an idea in your mind what you wanna do and it doesn't produce the bites you want. It doesn't, and sometimes it can be timing or sometimes you're just not in the right zone. It's summertime. I know these fish are under the mats. I punched a bunch yes, the previous day, which was actually two days ago because I came out here on Friday and today is Sunday. And so I thought I'd get out here try something a little different to see if I can put some more bites or get some more fish in the boat in this area. I know they live here and I'm going to focus on where I got the bites the other day, which is on the points or on these submerged islands. So I'm going to show you guys some screenshots of what I'm seeing under the water. We'll talk more about what I'm doing. I'm going to finesse these fish with a worm and a drop shot. I'm still going to throw some top water if I see some opportunities. It's a little bit windier today. So I'm gonna walk you through it. We're gonna try to get some more bites and put some more fish in the boat and try to get establish a pattern here and see what's going on. All right, let's get back to fishing. So I fished around the backside of this island for like the last, I don't know, 45 minutes or so. And then there's another little island right here. I just had that one bite, but I kept seeing all these fish on the sonar. So I got the aqua view out and threw it down there. And sure enough, there's striper down there. There's bluegill, there's bass. They're all down there. You can see them schooled up when you get out here. Trying to get them to turn on and bite is another story. So I know they're there, but they're not biting. So I'm gonna hop around to some other spots here in hog, hit some points, some more submerged islands and cover water a little quicker to try to get a couple bites here and there and throw some more waypoints down. So. Just because you don't get bit out here doesn't mean those fish are not there. If you, especially if you're seeing big schools on the graph, you gotta wait for these fish to turn on. You gotta time it right. That's just part of the Delta. Okay, so let me give you a quick update on what's going on. I fished over at Hog for like another two hours after I caught that first fish throwing that little worm thinking I could go back in there today and maybe finesse some of those fish. Thought maybe I was missing something in there that maybe a finesse bite could get more bites and more qual and some quality bites, which didn't happen. So sometimes when you've tried everything in a certain area and it's not happening, you just got, you have to leave. So I'm making my way over to White's and I decided to stop over here by Tower Park in this little community hole. I'll throw the waypoint up for you. And I started throwing this sprinkler frog, which I'm kind of testing out and I'm gonna do a full review on here on the YouTube channel here shortly once I've had enough time with it and some fish catches. And I came in here and I got two bites right away that didn't hook up and then I caught a big one. And I, I didn't have any camera rolling. So I completely screwed that up. I had no GoPro footage. The Sony I thought was on, it wasn't on. I got a picture for you, that's about it. I'm basically, it's a little, just the wind is picked up and I'm just kind of ripping this bait through the water. I'm throwing it all the way up to the shore and then pulling it out to about 12 feet. There's clumps of hydrilla in here. And a couple of these fish came out and got it. So I went around and did the complete circle in here. No other bites. I went out, there's a little island over here as well. You'll see that. I'll, I'll throw a Google Earth uh, um, photo up and you can see that there's a little island out here if it shows it. Went out there, nothing else. So and I, I tried everything too. Once I got those bites, I thought maybe, okay, let me, uh, let me try something else. I tried a chatter bait. I tried the whopper plopper. And then I tried um, some worming out here and nothing. So I'm gonna bounce out of this place as well and hop around and see if I can't get some more bites and get some more fish on this sprinkler frog. And I won't forget to turn the Sony or the GoPro on this time. There we go. Oh, dang it. Ah. 
Okay, let's talk some rigging and the baits and the rods that I used. But first of all, a little bit about what you saw in the video. Just to reiterate, I went out there for a couple of days because the bite out there right now, it's not easy. So I wanted to go back out again and try to get a few more waypoints for you and some areas up in the north because I'm going to start making my way down towards Whites and the Middle Delta, some of the submerged islands, and eventually kind of fish all over out there and also try to hit some other lakes, etc. as the months and weeks progress. So the summer bite out there can be tough. You've got enough areas up there now that you can kind of do a little milk run around on that north side and try some of these techniques that I'm gonna, that I showed you in the video. So don't get frustrated out there. If you're not getting bit, just keep trying some of those same areas or look for similar areas within that area that we're fishing on that North Delta. So let me go over and talk about some of the baits real quick that I used out there. Uh, let me start real fast. We'll start with, I only had the one fish on this little curl tail worm. This is the Demiki 5.5. It's the Demiki Sneak. It's their cur curly tail worm. This is just a, a, a watermelon or green pumpkin with a black flake. I do have a 3 8 ounce. I'm gonna show you this real quick. It's uh, just a bullet weight that's got a screw lock on it. So that way I can use a straight shank hook on this. So it's just got a screw lock and it screws right into the nose of this bait. It keeps it pinned up really, really well. And I like to use that because I like to use a straight shank hook. This is a Gamagatsu worm hook. It's a size four. I think I get a better hookup ratio on that straight shank hook when they grab into it. It's, it's a nice smooth ramp basically to get that hook into their mouth. So that's the setup and that I use that little bullet weight. It's really super weedless. So you can kind of throw it out to these weed points, drop it down and really work it through the weeds and never pick up any weeds or get it stuck out there. So it's a great bait to throw into little pockets on weed edges, weed points, flip it into toolies because it's so versatile. So, and so basically I, the other thing on this, I've got a 15 pound P-line floral leader. It's about three and a half feet long. And it's on this Dobbins 703C, the champion series split handle. Basically you've seen me use this before. I use it for a lot of my worming, like Senkos. Um, I'll even use it for drop shots out there. It's got a nice soft tip for the cast and then it loads up about one third down on the rod there for the heavy backbone. Great setup, great setup, good, worm and rod out there that I like to use. Abu Garcia Revo STX 64 to 1 reel. You've seen a lot of these already on previous videos, so you kind of are getting an idea of the equipment I use. Next was the crankbait. I did catch a couple little dinks on there. I was just trying to throw the crankbait around to see if there was a crankbait bite on some of those riprap walls. This, you've another one you've seen me throw before. I like to use this kind of medium to deep diver Demiki. You're going to see some hook rash on this and there's still some weeds on here stuck in the hooks. So the, the Demiki DC 300 in a craw. And I do have one thing to note is I have a little snap ring on there. So if I need to adjust for the depth, instead of having to, to retie a bunch, I just throw another, I can undo the snap ring, throw a different bait on there, depending on the depth I want my crankbait to go. If I want it more shallow or a little bit more deep, they do make a DC 100, 200, and a 400 in this series. This is on straight braid, no leader, 20 pound Power Pro braided line right there. On, again, on a Revo STX. This is the Dobbins Champion Series. This is the crankbait rod, it's the 704. Nice soft tip on there to make nice long casts. And then that rod loads up about halfway down the rod there. And it got a nice soft tip. So when those fish are shaking, that these treble hooks don't rip right out of their mouth. So that is important to have a rod that's got is nice and soft with some parabolic. So the fish aren't pulling those treble hooks out of their mouth and coming unbuttoned. Whopper plopper. I did catch a couple of nice whopper plopper fish. I was throwing the bigger one this time. Uh, this is the not this is the rattle version again i still haven't got to tackle warehouse and got myself a silent version on this this is the whopper plopper 130 just in a white this is actually a custom painted one but any white one works and this is on 65 pound braided line and the rod on this one is the dobbins 734 
It's the split handle, so it's the 734 Champion Series split handle. Again, my I like to throw it on the, the my chatter bait rod, which I've shown you in a different video. I just I only have one of those rods, and I was throwing the chatter bait out there. So this is my backup Whopper Plopper rod with a 65 pound Power Pro braid, Revo STX six four to one, and on this on the plopper out there, I throw it pretty much all over the place. I'm throwing it in front of Thule points all on the weed edges. If the water is too shallow and I can't get this plopper through and it's weeding up, I do have this new Tekel Sprinkler Frog. I'm getting this right. I keep want, trying, wanting to call this thing a sprinkler frog, which I do in the video a bunch of times. It's a sprinkler frog by Tekel. I do have a full review of this on the YouTube channel. And wind, this is a great bait to use when I want that same tail action as a whopper plopper. I want that spinning tail action, but I need it to be weedless and I want to be able to get it through pockets across mat, matted vegetation, maybe through a pocket that's three or four feet wide and in, in diameter. And I need, and I want that action where I can buzz it across or kill it and then buzz it again, stop, start retrieve. This is an awesome little bait. I love, I love most 90% of this thing so far. Like I, again, I said, like I said, there's a YouTube review on my channel. And this one, I caught the biggest fish uh, of those two days was on this. Uh, and I had some blow ups. I actually lost one that you saw in the video. And basically on this one, I'm doing different retrieves depending on the water, the surface of the water. If it's flat, I'm just doing a straight, slow retrieve, a pause, a retrieve, a pause, mixing it up to see you know what the fish want. When it got a little more choppy out there, I was kind of ripping this thing. I'd rip it slow retrieve, rip, slow retrieve. They really try to see if I could call those fish out from underneath any vegetation. When the chop was on the water, it's a little bit harder for those fish to pick this up. And I was getting bit when it was choppy on there. And this bait does allow you to really give some action and get those fish's attention. So again, I was kind of doing the same thing with, the, uh, with this one as I was with a whopper plopper. I'm throwing it on the weed edges, but on this one, I could throw it across the mats. I could throw it in the pockets. So it was a lot more versatile. And I ended up throwing this quite a bit out there and on this one, 65 pound braid. I do have it on the Dobbins 735C, another rod with a nice soft tip and a heavy, heavy backbone. Great frog rod. One thing to note on this one is I do throw it on a faster reel. It's a seven to one Abu Garcia Revo STX. And I like a little faster rod for my frogs. I can reel up that slack fast when a, when a fish is coming at me or I can, and then I'm making, pitches. I also pitched this sprinker frog around and like the Revo rocket, which I'll show you in a minute, I can be more efficient out there with a faster reel. So I do always have a seven to one on my frogs. The other bait that I used out there was, and I punched, I punched a bunch out there and I didn't get a punch bite going. I was punching hydrilla mats, hyacinth, all over the place, uh, I was punching submerged grass that was you know, two or three feet down below the water on the points and on those island tops. Just couldn't get a punch bite going. And like I said, the bite was pretty tough out there. So it may change tomorrow, next week. You just never know with the Delta. One and a half ounce trash bomb, river to sea, tungsten weight. I've got two bobber stops on there. I do have a, a, a Red Craw punch skirt made by Paychex Baits. This is also the river to sea. This is the new Jack flipping hook. It's the size four with your a beaver. This is the Bloody Mary Reaction Innovations Sweet Beaver, not the double wide. It's the smaller version. Perfect for flipping out there. Nice compact bait. Again, I don't, I don't smell this one. I'm trying just using it on a regular Palomar knot. I only caught the one fish um, out there uh, on this bait and hooked it up. It, was, it wasn't huge. 65 pound power pro braid on this one. I was just, like I said, you, you saw the places I was flipping this. We talked about it. I still have this on the deck because you just never know when those, you're going to find that awesome mat that's got a bunch of fish underneath it and you catch some big ones. So the rod here is the, the specific flipping rod for Dobbins. It's a 765 flip. Let me try to get the braid off of here so I can show you the, what the tip looks like on this one. I'll get it. I'll get it. There we go. It's got a soft tip on there with plenty of backbone right down on the third 
of the rod where you want that to load up. And it's not, a, like I said before in some other videos, not a heavy, heavy rod like some of these other really, really heavy rods. I like a little softer tip to give that fish a little bit of room to move around. And I don't want to feel like I'm ripping this bait right out of their mouth when I'm doing that hook set. This is the Revo Rocket. I've showed it to you in other videos. It's that Revo Rocket, nine to one, retrie nine to one retrieve on this. One revolution of the handle turns that spool nine times. So again, I'm super efficient out there on the water when I'm pitching because I can retrieve up all that line really fast and get to my next spot I want to pitch to. Pitch, pitch, pitch. Efficiency is the key when pitching out there. Get as many flips as you can in in these high percentage areas, areas to get as many bites as possible. So. I'm mixing it up. I'm going to Comanche this Sunday, but I'm going to get back out to the Delta again. Make sure if you're heading over to the YouTube page to subscribe to the channel so you get notifications when new truth episodes come out. Make sure you sign up and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I also put notifications on there. If you're on YouTube and you want to get notifications when new videos hit, it goes to your email. Hit the little bell button on the YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe, make sure you like, hit, throw some comments down from questions. I get to all those pretty quickly. I'm in the, on that channel every day, responding to your questions and comments. I'm Aaron Lesseur. Stay focused, fish hard, and I'll see you out on the water.